I want to start with my study on selenium. Do you eat Brazil nuts? I used to. I used to intentionally eat one Brazil nut a day because of that little meme going around, one Brazilian, one Brazil nut a day, whatever. Um, you know, it gives you a daily dose of selenium. But I now take a multivitamin that has, you know, essential eight. So it's got eight, eight vitamins. Micrograms, you, I think. Right. It's a 70K. So yeah, I take a, I take a multivitamin that has selenium in it. Might be CC. And, and I take that every day. So I don't eat Brazil nuts currently. Should I? <laughs> well, in I alluded to this at the beginning. So in my book, I wrote about the, at the, in chapter 10, I think it is, chapter 10, nutrients of focus. And I go through eight nutrients of focus, uh, how when you're eating a plant-rich, plant-based diet, how you can optimize these and make sure you're getting enough of these important micronutrients. One of those being selenium. And at the time of writing it, I was pretty convinced that the best two ways were either to supplement with approximately 50 to 70 micrograms per day. So the RDI for a, a, a adult woman is 60 micrograms per day, adult man is 70. And you'll, you'll get a little bit through a plant-based diet, but unless you're eating Brazil nuts, that amount typically is you know around 40 micrograms per day. So the average person on a plant-based diet who's not supplementing, not eating Brazil nuts is getting like 40 to 50 micrograms per day, falling a little bit short of what those RDIs are. And selenium, just to give you an idea of its importance, it is critical to immune function. It's important to endogenous production of antioxidants like glutathione. It's important to male fertility. It's important for thyroid health the production of thyroid hormones along with iodine. So it is a nutrient of focus for plant-based eaters. And as you say, there is a, I guess, a general guideline or heuristic that Brazil nuts, if you eat one or two a day, that will ensure that you get enough selenium along with the other foods you eat to get you to that RDI, right? Which means your body has enough selenium to do all those things that I just mentioned. This study that... I read was a, a randomized controlled trial out of Germany. In Germany, the levels of so selenium in the soil, like Australia, New Zealand, a lot of countries is actually quite low. So a lot of the plant-based foods we're getting do not have a lot of selenium in them. So they were interested in going out and getting a group of vegans. These were people that were aged between 19 and 32, males and females. And then they got a group of omnivores from Germany as well, same age. And they brought them into this study and they measured their baseline selenium levels. Baseline selenium intake in the vegan group was about 45-ish micrograms per day. And in the omnivore group was 64 micrograms per day. So interestingly, even the omnivores were a little bit below the RDI. But they, they did go on to look at measure actual selenium status and it was a much higher percentage of vegans that had suboptimal selenium status than, than omnivores, as you would expect. There was 84%, uh, to be specific, of the vegans were below the RDI selenium intake, and it was 63% in the omnivore group that were below that RDI. This study had an interesting intervention, but it's actually not the intervention and the results of this study that I was most interested in. So they brought these uh, omnivores in and vegans from Germany, and they randomized each group into three groups. So each group, the omnivores and the vegans, then got randomized into placebo, given nothing, a Brazil nut butter that contained 55 micrograms of selenium, or a selenium supplement. And the reason that they chose the Brazil nut butter rather than Brazil nuts, is the first thing in this paper that caught my eye. So they, all Brazil nuts come from Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, South America. And there is great variability in the selenium content of the Brazil nuts within a batch and also between batches depending on where they come from. So they, had, before they conducted the study, tested the selenium content of the Brazil nuts because they wanted to make sure that they were giving people the same dose of selenium from the Brazil nuts as was in the supplement to make it a fair comparison and then measure how do 
selenium status markers change. Uh, okay. okay. So you're so you're basically saying, okay, in vegans and in omnivores, if they have suboptimal selenium status, is there an advantage to getting the selenium from Brazil nuts or from a supplement? Right. But in order to do that, you need to measure how much selenium is in your Brazil nuts that you have. And this is where it was super interesting. So they they found that I I ran the calculation based on the average Brazil nut being five grams. They found that the average content or the content of selenium in a Brazil nut varied from around one micrograms anywhere up to 25 micrograms per Brazil nut. And so based on that, the researchers thought, well, we can't just say feed everyone two Brazil nuts because right. Drew might get two Brazil nuts that have one microgram and then Simon gets two that have 25. Simon's got 50 micrograms and Drew only got two. Right. So they thought, what can we do? Well, let's blend the Brazil nuts up to get a sort of homogenous level of selenium distributed throughout that nut butter. And they did it in a way where they were able to get 55 micrograms of selenium into a serve, which was 15 grams of nut butter. Okay. okay. That's small. That's like a teaspoon. Right. <laughs> this was, yeah, it's probably between a teaspoon and a tablespoon. Okay. A teaspoon is probably more like five grams, I'd say. Okay. So right. it's, it's, yeah, it's probably leaning more, a little bit more towards a tablespoon. This episode is proudly brought to you by 38 Terra. Try 38 Terra's DMN Prebiotic, the science-based daily multivitamin for your gut microbes, a simple and delicious way to take your gut health to the next level. Now back in stock in new and improved packaging for customers living in the United States, Australia, and New Zealand. Get 10% off your DMN at 38terra.com using the code THEPROOF. That's 38TERA.com and use the coupon code THEPROOF for 10% off. What I thought was interesting at that point was the generalizability of this study because I immediately thought, okay, well, they've standardized it. So <laughs> both these groups are going to perform pretty much the same unless there's something in the Brazil nuts that's increasing absorption or lowering absorption. Right? And sure enough, they pretty much performed the same. So you might go, okay, well, the outcome of that is, and the takeaway is like, you know, buy a Brazil nut butter or take a supplement. But then uh, upon thinking about that a little bit more, I was left with this question. Well, how do you know the selenium concentration of the Brazil nut butter that you buy? Because it's going to be heavily dependent upon the batch of Brazil nuts that were used to create that. And, and so I, I looked a little bit more at studies that have evaluated the selenium content of Brazil nuts. And I found another paper, 2017, which admittedly, I should have picked this up years ago. I wrote my book in 2019. So this was a, an oversight. Uh, where selenium content varied anywhere from 8 micrograms to 200 micrograms per nut. Whoa. Okay, so now you're, you're left with this sort of great variability. So even if you buy them and blend them, if what you buy, the selenium content is very low, then whatever you end up, your blended kind of absolute selenium amount is not going to be high. Right. Right. So you wouldn't know how many tablespoons to take to get to 55 micrograms. It might be that you have a very low dose. Uh, your Brazil nuts are not very concentrated in selenium. So you might need three tablespoons. Right. Okay. And, or you might have nuts that have 150 to 200 micrograms per nut and you're blending a lot of those. And so you're consuming way more selenium than the RDI. And the issue with that is, the European Food Safety Authority brought out a paper in 2023, I'll put in the show notes, where they have actually changed the upper limit to about 255 micrograms per day. And that's where you start seeing some side effects of toxicity from too much selenium. So it would only take, you know, a couple of Brazil nuts if they were highly concentrated in selenium to get you over that, that level. So with, with that in mind, paired with the fact that it's very hard to go and test your selenium status. So if selenium was a marker that was easy to go down to your doctor and get a test like an iron test, I would say just be guided by that. You know, if your typical diet, you go and measure your selenium status, it looks good, then you know, probably the foods you're eating, the soil it's grown in, like it's the right amount of selenium for you. But 
like actually measuring selenium content like uh, a status is difficult it's it's a you have to get selenium serum selenium measured you have to get some proteins in the blood measured that are hard and some enzymes in blood that most people most laboratories do not test for this was a clinical test where they measured these things so accessibility to test that is difficult it's difficult to know how much selenium exactly is in the brazil nuts that you're buying you're likely getting a lot of volatility from batch to batch from day to day and given the importance of selenium in immune function male fertility thyroid health all these things metabolism that i mentioned at the top i think the more precise way to go about getting selenium is through a supplement and that supplement would be in the realm of 50 to 70 micrograms per day so then you know with the you know 30 to 40 micrograms you're getting through your diet you're going to be definitely getting your RDI without going way too high. Okay, so I've got so many questions, but one just a uh, quick one is when you say RDI, recommended daily intake, is that different to RDA, recommended daily allowance? Like is this an upper limit ceiling that you don't really want to cross? The RDI is or not an upper limit. The upper limit yeah. is the upper limit. So they're different. 250 or whatever you said, yeah. Right. So it's okay to go above the RDI as long as you're below a level which we understand creates toxicity. There is some debate on where that is for selenium. So the World Health Organization, um, Australian kind of nutrient reference values suggest it's 400 micrograms per day. But as I mentioned in 2023, European Food Safety Authority came out and said, we need to reevaluate this and they dropped it to around 250 micrograms per day. Okay. So my next question is, this kind of goes back to, that, I guess, that appeal to nature sort of fallacy that a lot of people think is if you can get your selenium from a whole food, surely that's better than going for a multivitamin or, or a powder or a supplement form. But you're saying in this paper, selenium status was not different between whether you got it from a Brazil nut or whether you supplemented. It was, it was the, the same. Fact that the, the, the supplement marginally outperformed the Brazil nut butter and improving status selenium status in some of the in some of the subjects so i but i agree with you i think the intuitive thought is let's go to nature right that's that that so that starts off uh that gives us a level of doubt about the supplement and as a hypothesis i think the food will outperform the supplement okay let's let's go and test it okay first thing we test here is like what's the selenium content of brazil nuts and we learn a fact by by doing the the actual testing we we learn this fact that now we take on board oh the selenium content of Brazil nuts is really variable. Some of them don't contain a lot, some contain a lot. So now we're left with the problem of, well, how many Brazil nuts do we eat? And, and how do we know each time we buy them what the selenium content is of that particular batch? Because we don't have these, these tools at home to test them. Yes. So, so the safest bet to make is to lean on a supplement that has the effective daily dose that you need to avoid deficiencies and not exceed into toxicity. But if you want to eat a Brazil nut every now and then, it's just not going to kill you. Exactly. It's not, it's not poison. It's not going to kill you. I love the taste of Brazil nuts. And my emotions want me to lean into telling people, eat Brazil nuts. But the data here is telling me that that's overall, if, if you recommend that to a large population, there is 100%. There's going to be some people who suffer from that, either from not getting enough selenium, their thyroid becomes impaired, they have metabolism issues, they have male fertility issues, or there's gonna be some people who get way too much and you create toxicity issues. So I'd rather just be guided by the studies here and say, what we do know is if you use a supplement, it's well absorbed and you're gonna be in the safe zone. There's no guessing. I love it. I'll tell you what comes to mind. This is, it's, maybe this is another study that I'd like to see. I, I, would, I don't know how popular Brazil nut butter is. I know you can get it, absolutely. There's like ABC butter, which is like almond, Brazil, cashew. There's all these other, but you can make it, you can blend it yourself. I would be interested to see if you get two identical batches of Brazil nuts that have been tested to have the same micrograms per gram of selenium per gram of Brazil nut, where you feed people whole Brazil nuts versus the butter. Because we know that when you blend peanut butter or almond butter, you actually extract more calories from the peanut butter than the calories from the chewed version of the whole food that pass through undigested. 
So I wonder if you eat your whole Brazil nuts, whether selenium gets trapped in that sort of fiber matrix and you don't absorb as much selenium from whole versus blended. I think it's an interesting the hypothesis and the hypothesis makes sense that maybe when you blend it, you, you make the vitamins and minerals more available. But there are studies looking at whole Brazil nuts and I guess the chewing process is enough because where they have used whole Brazil nuts that are highly concentrated in selenium, they've been able to, to improve selenium status. And that's where, coming back full circle, that's actually where this, uh, this initial recommendation has come from. It's from studies like a randomized controlled trial in New Zealand where they did take people with suboptimal status and fed them Brazil nuts and they improved their selenium status. The issue is they were using Brazil nuts that were highly concentrated in selenium. In a real world application, you don't know what you're getting. It's highly variable. So one more thing I just add there is that whether it's a whole Brazil nut or a Brazil nut butter, there is evidence showing that they can improve selenium status. And so someone can point to that study and say, Simon's wrong. I'm not arguing that. If, if the Brazil nut contains enough selenium, be it the whole nut or the nut butter, there's evidence to show that selenium is absorbed improved status. My question to you is, when you go to the grocery store and you buy Brazil nuts, how do you know that they are that concentrated with selenium as in the studies used? You don't, and we have evidence showing that Brazil nut selenium concentration can vary anywhere from 8 to 200 micrograms per nut. Right. And I think that it's important to note that like, there are so many foods out there that have varying amounts of nutrients, vitamins, and minerals, even within the same food group. So like you could have two oranges that have different vitamin C or two this or that with different whatever. But when we're talking about something that you can reach levels of toxicity, this really does matter. Whilst like if you eat too many apples or if you eat too much of, I don't know, whatever food and fill in the blank, the risk is not as high as something like this. If you're eating 20 Brazil nuts and they all have over 100 micrograms, you're in probably some trouble. Yeah, this is this is like an, uh, one where you want to pay a bit more focus because it's easy to fall short on on a plant-based diet as well because most of the, the other foods are really poor in the, the selenium content. And as you say, it's easy to get to the upper limit because it's such a small range where you're trying to get to. It's 2025 and I have made the decision to join Function Health to help monitor and optimize my health. And honestly, after getting set up, I am wondering what took me so long. Function makes it extremely easy to track important biometric information over a lifetime. Information that you can use in real time to make important health decisions. Function gives you over 100 lab tests covering your entire body every year. Heart, hormones, liver, kidneys, thyroid, metabolic health, heavy metals, autoimmunity, nutrients, and more. Five times more testing than your typical physical for $499 a year. A lot cheaper than if you were to order all of these tests individually. That's if you can order them. Take ApoB and LP little a, for example, two very important tests for determining your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Yet, as outlined in multiple episodes on this show by Dr. Thomas Dayspring, they can be incredibly difficult to order with your local doctor. Using Function is very straightforward. You join and then visit one of their 2000 US lab locations. I went to one here in LA where I live. It's very easy and boom, your results are tracked over time in one secure place. No shady upselling, no gimmicks, just your results beautifully presented and science-based insights from doctors to help you optimize your health. Skip the 400,000 person wait list today at functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill and join me on the path to nerd level health optimization. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. 